New Zealand has no native land mammals other than bats. For around 85 million years, these islands were so remote that the rest of the world's mammals just never made it here. All the parts of the ecosystem that mammals would fill instead went to birds or lizards or insects. A lot of those birds are flightless because there was nothing they had to fly away from, and even the bats spend a lot of time on the ground. Then in the 13th century, Maori arrived, bringing with them one now extinct species of dog and Polynesian rats. That wasn't great for the local species. And then in the 18th century, Europeans arrived and brought a lot. Rats, stoats, ferrets, weasels, possums, all predators which the local creatures had not evolved to defend against. If New Zealand wants to keep its unique ecosystem and wants the local species to recover, at least the species that aren't already extinct, then the blunt fact is that either the local species are going to survive or the predators are. The only places in the world that have managed to completely eradicate invasive species are very small islands a few square kilometres across, or fenced off reserves that are regularly patrolled and studied. And most of those are in and around New Zealand. But clearing something the size of a country, and a rural country at that, that's not just a challenge, that's a moonshot. So today, I met with people from Predator Free Wellington, because they're some of the folks who are making a start on it. So this is one of our um, trusty trap boxes. They get pretty hammered out here with all the elements. There's no one in there right now, okay. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's still set, it's still baited. Okay. And then we've got a bait station there too. It's basically toxin. So this is basically a, a very secure plastic box. It's locked closed so that pets and children, that sort of thing, can't get access to the bait inside. And then in here we've got a toxic wax block. Oh, you're, um, just, you're just touching that. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, to people, people or um, even cats and dogs would have to eat a huge quantity of this for it to right. have any effects. Whereas a rat only needs really five grams or so for a lethal oh, dose. Wow. So it makes it a really effective tool. There's also an antidote. And that is presumably delicious to rats. Yeah, <laughs> they tend to love it. Um, I don't it's... know what the flavor is in there, but it's a cereal based bait, basically. Right. And then this other one here is kind of interesting. Um, we'll, wait, uh, we'll wait for the blame. <laughs> right next to the airport. This is called DTEC, so it's a non-toxic type of bait, and rats love to eat it, um, but the reason we use it is because it actually glows under UV light, bright green, and so they'll eat this, and then their droppings or their urine or even their insides right. will glow. And so for us in our barrier system, it means that if we detect a rat along here somewhere or we catch one in a trap, we can work out where it's come from, basically. Right. So that peninsula is free of rats? Yep, just about. That section isn't? Yep. And the buffer is right now the airport and this, this bridge here. Yeah, so right. the airport provides a really nice natural buffer area because rats don't particularly like to be out in the open where it's super exposed and so we don't see much evidence of them crossing that big concrete expanse. So the plan is, start at the edge of the Miramar Peninsula, eradicate the predators there and then establish a buffer zone and then keep pushing that buffer zone back and back and back and back until eventually there are no predators left in the whole of Wellington. We've got about 5,800 traps in our network and then about 6,800 bait stations of varying types. <laughs> the trap to me just looks like a box with a hole in it. Exactly. And like if the rat can get in, how does the rat not get out? It's basically an entrance on one side and the mesh at the other side they can see through so it looks like a clear run for them yeah. which um, we've found makes them more likely to go inside and investigate. And then we've got some lure inside as well. Um, so there's a paste that just smells really good and so they'll go in for a nosy. Um, I can whip this oh. open, there we go. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a pretty grunty trap. Yeah, in my head, up until this moment, I was like, oh, it's a trap. The rat goes in, the rat gets trapped, you release the rat. So, no, you don't. Yeah, no. No, that no, this is definitely a lethal trap. Yeah. Yeah, and it's humane certified to the New Zealand standards, so yeah. we basically want traps that the animal's not going to suffer more than it needs to. Yeah. It's going to be pretty instant, pretty powerful. Um, I can give you a demo of setting it off if you'd like. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's it's kind of really brutal calculus isn't it you just either the rat dies or the unique species here dies unfortunately yeah I mean it's never nice to have to kill animals and rats are I've got a lot of respect for them they're great creatures in their own right but unfortunately they just can't coexist with our native species so I can give note, this a demo yeah, let's, let's. <laughs> so I'm just going to use my gloves because they're nice and soft yep. and lob them in and hopefully that will set it off two one there we go okay <laughs> Yeah. So that's, that's pretty punchy. That's going to be messy. Yeah. Yeah. How often do you have to clean one of these out? Not very much these days, thankfully. Yeah. Along here, it's still reasonably rare, but we do catch probably about three rats each time we service this barrier system. 
on the peninsula, we're catching a lot less rats now, which is nice. Yep, especially in this hot weather. <laughs> you really do have to be so careful. Oh yeah. How many people do you have working on this? So we've got a full-time field staff of about 25, and then there's a few of us in the office as well doing the data crunching and that sort of thing. That's and way more than I thought. And then on top of that, we've got a huge volunteer force. So they make up about 10% of the efforts on Miramar Peninsula. Right. And it's government funded, presumably? Yeah, a lot of it is. So it's a big collaboration, this one. So what we can see here, we've had a rat oh, uh, come along and chew this oh. monitoring card of ours. So we call these two cards. Uh, they're a really effective monitoring tool. It's basically just a piece of core flute plastic and then we mash peanut butter into the gaps. <laughs> but it works a treat. <laughs> so it's been here within the last week, we know, because we've serviced this quite recently. You can't poison the peanut butter then? <laughs> Unfortunately not. We considered no, the avenue, but I don't of think course, we... Of course, because um, that's something that other creatures... Other creatures could get to, right. a dog could have a nibble, um, yep. it's also the combining of toxin with food is one of those things that oh. I don't think you're technically allowed to do, so we've okay. got to be very careful to keep it all safe and, and legal and all of that. I've um, just, I'm, no, the trap has not been set off. The trap's not been set, there, so it. it's had a nibble, it's getting interested, but it hasn't gone in yet. But, yet. yet. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble is, as long as there's a breeding pair of rats anywhere outside that buffer zone, there's a threat. Alberta, in Canada, is the only place outside of the poles where there are no rats. And that's because rats never got established there. A combination of harsh geography on all sides and a vicious, almost obsessive, government-backed control programme kept rats out, and still does to this day. That's what Wellington will always have to deal with. Unless they just keep pushing. The reserve here, this is where the rats have been eliminated rather than suppressed, right? Yeah, exactly. So it took us about six months of really um, intense efforts but we've now eliminated all of the rats out of this area so so how do you know we've got a lot of monitoring that goes into it trail cameras a big one they're just about the golden standard we can get for monitoring rats um, you can see there's one just tucked down in here oh spot the city boy <laughs> <laughs> oh okay yeah so they're uh, camouflaged to blend in as best they can so that the rats don't notice them. And it's pointed at motor lure. It's basically got a syringe of mayonnaise inside <laughs> with a little motor. Sure. Okay. And once a day, it basically pushes out a mill of mayonnaise from the syringe. Without us having to come here every single day, it's keeping a fresh food source and a fresh lure so for these some, rats. And anything that comes to eat it? Gets caught on camera. Right. Yeah. It's a really effective way of basically telling us if there's any rats left in an area and rats seem to love egg mayonnaise so it works pretty well. And are there any left? Not in here. It's been a huge effort but now we can safely say it's rat free. Is it working? Well it seems to. The statistics say that animal life is recovering on the peninsula. The key thing is this isn't limited to just Wellington. Across the whole of New Zealand there are groups doing the same. There's a government plan called Predator Free 2050 but it is optimistic. The plan even admits that to pull this off on a national scale they'll need some new scientific discovery to make this easier. And new scientific discoveries and ecosystem management are words that historically haven't gone well together. Do you think it's going to work? Do you think that they'll get New Zealand clear by 2050? I think they will, yeah. yeah. I think just looking at the progress we've made in the last couple of years already, particularly here, we've learnt so much in the last 12 months that if you extrapolate that out, I think we've definitely got a good shot of it. I think we'll, we'll crack it. <laughs> Can it be done? <laughs> Maybe, with enough money, time and human effort. And for my limited time here, I'd say that protection of the land and ecosystem, the Maori word roughly translated is kaitiakitanga, it seems to be part of New Zealand's national identity in a way I don't think I've seen in any other country I've been to. Towns, regions, sure, but never a country. If anyone can pull this off, it's going to be New Zealand.